Okay, hello everyone, and this is going to be a tutorial on how to perform the Polaroid picture collage effect. Uh, as you can see, I have Photoshop already pulled up, and I have chosen my picture that I'm going to do this effect to. Uh, so if you have not done that yet, you should pause the video now and go and find a high quality, really nice photo that you're going to do this effect to. Uh, you're also going to need to have these instructions with you. Uh, these can be found in the toolbox, so you might want to open those up as well. So we're going to create a collage effect, and basically when we're done, uh, this picture is going to look like that's a, it, that it is a whole bunch of really small pictures um, stacked on top of each other to create one large picture. And to do that, we're going to use several different uh, techniques that we've discussed in class, uh, such as grouping layers, uh, um, using masks, uh, duplicating layers, and so on. So I am going to start right here with number one and open the photo, which I've already done, as you can see on my uh, Photoshop. So step two, I'm going to duplicate the photo. To do that, I'm just going to simply right click on top of this layer and choose duplicate layer. Okay, when you do that, you're going to get a window that pops up and it's going to ask you if you want to name the new layer. Uh, I'm just going to keep mine as background copy and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that I now have two layers over here on my layers menu. Step three says add a blank layer between the two photos. So to add a layer you go to the icon that's right down here in the bottom right corner. It's right between the trash can and the grouping layer and you're going to click one time and it's going to create a brand new layer. And step three says that I want to put that layer in between the two. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to drag it and drop it so that it's right in between my two photos. Step four, fill the blank layer with black. All right, the easiest way to fill any layer with a single color is by using the paint bucket tool. So I'm going to go over here and select my paint bucket tool. I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is black, which mine currently is not. So I need to change this to black. And now that it is black, I'm going to do a single click, and my layer turns black. Uh, you can see that my picture looks the exact same, but over here on my layer, it is now showing black. So it has worked. Step four, add another blank layer above the black layer. So back down here to the bottom right, click one time to add a new blank layer, and it goes right above the black layer. Step five, use the rectangular marquee selection tool to drag out a square anywhere on the image. Okay, so the rectangular marquee selection tool is the second one from the top. It's right here. Uh, you might remember that we used this tool whenever we selected the Coca-Cola sign way back at the very beginning of the semester. So I'm going to click this, and I'm going to drag out a square anywhere on the picture. Uh, so I'm just going to drag out a square right here. That looks good. Um, it doesn't need to be very large. I mean, you can make it as big as you want, but the smaller kind of the better because then you can get more photos uh, as part of the effect. Uh, step six, fill the square selected with black. So back over to my paint bucket. My foreground color is still black. I'm going to hover it inside of my selection and click one time. Once again, it doesn't change anything on top, but I can see that over here on my layer, I now have a black square showing up. I can now deselect. You can use Control D or you can choose Select deselect. I am ready for step eight. Create a clipping mask of the layer by selecting the top photo, then choose layer drop down menu and create clipping mask. Okay, so I'm going to choose the top photo, which is right here. I'm going to make that my active layer by clicking on it. I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to choose create clipping mask, which is right here. As soon as I do that, my whole screen is going to turn black except for the area where my black uh, square is that I filled in previously. You may please make sure that you that yours looks similar to this. If at this point yours doesn't look like this, you've made a mistake either with the layer ordering or something else. So if yours doesn't look sort of like this, you should pause and back up. Okay, I am now ready for step nine. It says add another blank layer above the black layer. So I'm going to first click on the black layer. I am then going to go down here to the create a new layer option and it's going to create another blank layer right above the black layer. Step 10, 
Use the Rectangle Marquee Selection tool to drag out the border of the photo. Remember that Polaroid photos have a large bottom border. All right, so I'm going to go back over to my Marquee Selection tool. This is the one that I used earlier. This is like the inside of my photo right here, the square. So I am going to create a border around it. And on a Polaroid photo, the bottom is just a little bit larger than everything else. Um, a lot of people like to use that part to just kind of like write in messages or write in, uh, you know, who was in the photo. So I am going to drag out more. It's more like a rectangle, basically. Bottom part's a little bit larger. It says, says fill that selection with white. So back to my paint bucket. I click my paint bucket. I'm going to change my foreground color to white. And now I'm going to paint bucket this section in. Now it's kind of starting to look like a Polaroid photo a little bit. It's got the white border, the bottom's a little bit bigger, and then I've got the picture in the middle. Once again, I'm going to deselect. You can either hit Control D or select Deselect. I am now on step 12. Add a drop shadow effect to the white selection layer. Change the opacity of 30%. So this is kind of an optional um, step. I like putting this drop shadow on there so that whenever all of the pictures are stacked on top of each other, you can see the difference between which ones are on top of each other. But once again, this is optional. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I've got the layer that has my white square. I'm going to hit on the FX menu. And I'm going to choose drop shadow. When I do that, I'm going to get a menu that looks kind of like this one. I am going to change the opacity to 30% or something really close to 30%. 32 is fine. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now you might not see the immediate results of what you just did. However, once you get a lot of these layers stacked together, it will be noticeable. OK, I am now ready for step 13. Select the white selection layer and black box layer. Then use free transform to rotate and move the Polaroid. Okay, so this one right here is my white selection layer. That's the one that I currently have selected. It's also got the drop shadow effect on it. The one above that is the black box. If I want to select two layers at the same time, I can hold control on my keyboard and click on the second layer. Now both of these layers are blue, so they're both selected. I'm now going to use the free transform tool so I can rotate and move this picture around. Uh, you can get to free transform by hitting control T or by going to edit free transform. When you do that, you get the box around your selection. At this point, I can rotate and I can also move. It's almost going to be like you're looking through a window seeing the picture on the other side. And the reason that is working is because we have a mask. Uh, so I can rotate this and position it anywhere I want. I'd like to position it right here, right on top of Salvi Perez, because I think that I want his picture to show up really good. As soon as I'm happy with the angle and the placement of my picture, I'm going to hit the check mark to accept the changes. All right, I am now on step 14. It says select the top photo with the other two layers and create a group. So I am going to go back over here to my layers. I'm going to hold Control again, and I'm going to do a left click to select the top photo. I'm then going to, um, excuse me, I'm going to uh, go down to my grouping option, uh, which is right here, and click it one time, and it's going to create a group. I need to move these layers into my group by just simply dragging and dropping them into group one. So all three of these layers that are part of this photo effect are inside of group one. If I were to close the group, you could see that those three layers get positioned into the folder. Um, layer 15 or step 15 is duplicate the group. So the reason we put these into a group is so we can easily duplicate them and then do the effects over and over again. So at this point, I'm going to do a right click on top of group one. I'm going to choose duplicate group. It's going to ask me if I want to call it anything. I'll go ahead and call it group two, just so I don't get confused. And I'm going to hit OK. Now group two, if I open it up, there are three layers inside of it. They're the same three layers that are in group one because I duplicated them. 
I am now on step 16. It says open the duplicated group, which I've already done by hitting this triangle and seeing all the layers that are in there, and select only the bottom two layers. So that means I'm going to select everything but the background copy. So I'm going to click on this one, hold control, and click on this one. I'm then going to do the free transform thing again. So edit, free transform. At this point, I can move this around. I have a second picture, as you can see on my screen. And I can also rotate this because it's individual from the other one. So I'm going to move it around. Maybe I will have it positioned up here so I get a really good view of Draw Dyson. Once I'm happy with this one, I hit the check mark. And I close this group and I do that process again. So what I mean by that process is I'm going to start back on step 15. I'm going to do a right click, choose duplicate group. I'm going to call this one group three. I'm going to open up that group, select only the bottom two layers. Do not select the background copy. I'm going to go edit free transform and I'm going to move this to a position that I want to go. Maybe rotate it a bit, hit the check mark and do it again. Duplicate, group four, open up, select the bottom two, edit free transform, move it to the spot you want it to go. Uh, how about I add on right here, maybe rotate a bit and follow those procedures again. After a while, you're going to get into a little bit of a rhythm. And when you are done, you're going to have a collage that looks like a whole bunch of Polaroid pictures are stacked on top of each other and they are making one large photo. Good luck.